Hello and welcome back to the Dore Woodman YouTube channel. Today we are talking heat pumps, consumer confidence and your ability to obtain the correct information that is true and fair. Now listen, social media and the internet can be our friend, it could also be our foe. I'll give you an example and the reason why we're making this video this week, we saw this. Heat pumps, the ugly truth and how heat pumps don't have a future in heating. Now listen, <laughs> unfortunately, it was a pretty poor display actually to try and debunk this technology. Over 300,000 people have watched this and we just want to set the record straight. I actually feel obliged to set the record straight. You know, I'm very passionate about this industry and I know that this technology works. Many of us do and it really does work. I don't have a problem with a, an opinion, okay? So if someone says, look, I'm not sure that this actually works in some environments, yes, that would be true and fair to say. There are many installations where this technology doesn't work on its own, off its own back, okay? But there are ways and methods in which we can actually introduce it to a heating system and also add in a boiler to back it up for the coldest days of the year, for example, or if your home just isn't insulated well enough, you've got single glazing, you haven't got loft insulation, cavity wall insulation, etc., etc., etc. We can use your EPC, and we can obtain this information just from you having a conversation. And very quickly, we can say, look, this probably isn't going to be the right fit for your home. New build, wonderful, absolutely wonderful. The only one thing I would say that doesn't work when it comes to new build is applying it with microbore. Okay, now if you haven't designed this properly and you've got microbore in your home, this can cause very inefficient consequences from the heat pumps themselves. So I'm watching this video and I recognize the face and I'm thinking, where have I seen that guy before? Lo and behold, he actually worked for Worcester Bosch and he was doing some of the early videos on YouTube, probably what, 11, 12 years ago? So go figure, Roger Bisbee from Worcester Bosch, loves boilers, hates heat pumps. <laughs> Didn't see that one come in. But the trouble is, the facts and the points that he was trying to make were just not substantial enough. There wasn't enough information. You know, saying that you, know, you put one unit of power in, you get two units of power out. This is what we call the SCOP, or the coefficient of performance. Um, you know, it's one in, two out maybe, but you know, there was no kind of evidence of it. it wasn't talking about a particular heat pump. Um, the refrigerant gases that were used for that heat pump. If we're talking about technology that was 10 or 12 years ago, that may have well have been, depending on what he was installing. Um, no talk of the size of the property, um, whether we're heating it up for radiators on the floor, heating systems, etc. So it's quite unsubstantiated. That just kind of you know, annoyed me a little bit because I think if you're going to say something about a product or you know, you've got to have evidence to back up why you've come to that conclusion. So I thought to myself, well look, let me actually give you some real facts about the, um, from the manufacturers themselves and what we've installed. So I've done two examples, two heat pump manufacturers that we use and we install quite regularly. And I've choose two sizes that we would generally use for retrofitting and you know, very well sized new build properties. So I've gone for a Mitsubishi Ecodan 11.2 and a Valent Aerotherm Plus 7 kilowatt. So the Mitsubishi Ecodan uses an R32. We look at sound data, okay? So how much sound production is there? Now, Rogers kind of said, well, yeah, they're noisy. Things will happen. They'll just become noisier, noisier, noisier. Right, let me just take a second now just to have a listen to the heat pumps that we've installed. We're going to show you an example for the Mitsubishi Ecodan and the Valent Aerotherm Plus. And then of course there's this noise that heat pumps make. Now the wind surround me, <laughs> that isn't to do with the heat pump blowing the garden around. That is because it is a blustery day today. But the heat pump is on right now. That fan is blowing and it is ultra quiet. I mean, I'm right in front of it. My face is in front of this fan and I'm not talking very loud at all. And when your heat pump is away from windows and doors, which even if it was near a window or door, you still wouldn't hear it. But from a metre away, you wouldn't even notice it's on. 
Okay, so this is the seven kilowatt outdoor unit as it's operating at the moment. This is on um, the surroundings are going to be changed. There's a wall that's being built behind and also they'll be taking up this floor level and removing the timbers away from the concrete pads which are in place. Um, so it's just a temporary setup as it is, but it's, it will stay in this position. So I don't know if you can hear. This is on at the moment, flat out, six, producing 60 degrees to heat up the hot water and it is extremely quiet. Now we've got other videos on our YouTube channel and on Instagram where you can see I've got a camera on top of the heat pump and the level of noise you wouldn't even know it was on. So you know, I don't, sound levels won't be a problem, I can assure you of that. So let, let's look at the, the coefficients then, you know, what we'd expect energy coming out from each heat pump. So generally, say, underfloor heating, we would set that to a 45 degree temperature. Depending on your home, if you've got a really brand spanking new, highly, thermal, uh, highly insulated new build property, 45 degrees actually might be a bit too warm. But we're just going to use this for an example. So at 45 degrees, we'd be looking at a 3.99 SCOP, not two almost four. That is for the 11.2 and that will produce 11.2 kilowatts of heat output at zero degrees outside. So that's almost 400% efficiencies. Then we look at radiators. Uh, for a radiator system, typically we'd be looking at setting up maybe like 50, possibly 55. But for example, for 50 degrees, 3.67 SCOP, not two, and 11.2 heat kilowatt output and zero degrees outside so that's a 367 percent efficiency and then even at a 55 degree flow temperature we'd be looking at 3.34 scop yeah that's over 300 percent efficiencies i think we're kind of getting my point here then we've got the aerotherm plus they use a refrigerant which is an r290 it's a natural refrigerant better for the environment but it's a propane you need less refrigerant in order for it to work still highly efficiently. Now, again, the sound data we've looked at, this would be 47 decibels, the um, Mitsubishi is classed as a 45 degree, uh, 45 decibel. And then looking at flow temperatures and scops, flow temperature, underfloor heating, 45 degrees, 3.91, 390% efficiencies. But the difference is with the Valent and this refrigerant, is that the power output that it can achieve, so it's classed as a seven kilowatt unit, but it can actually achieve over nine kilowatts of heat power coming into your home. Zero degrees outside, 390% efficiency. Radiators again, 50 degrees, 3.65 scop, not two. 8.6 kilowatts of heat, you know, basically it's saying it's seven kilowatt, but it will actually become an 8.6 kilowatt um, at zero degrees outside, 365 degree efficiency. And now this one is the one that um, I think is pretty, pretty incredible. 55 degree flow temp for radiators. 3.39, so almost 340% efficiency. Minus five outside can still be and produce a seven kilowatt heat output. So this technology is advancing and the processes are getting better and better. So there's no doubt in my mind that heat pumps are capable of producing sufficient heat for your home. Then we move on to hot water, domestic hot water demand. You know, what temperatures you're looking to achieve for your cylinder. Apparently, according to Roger, you can't achieve hot water appropriately. You can. Again, I'm going to show you a video where we've produced a 55 degree temperature for hot water on a retrofit using a six kilowatt air source heat pump. Take a look for yourself. So I'm just going to show you an example of how we set up domestic hot water temperatures. This is on a retrofit, not a new build project. We're going to set the heat pump to deliver a 55 degree hot water temperature and then we'll have a look and see how long that's going to take and we'll get back to it and then we'll show you exactly what it's managed to achieve.
Just to show you as well, we can actually set up maximum temperature drops. So if we've got a 55 degree heat, and for, say for example, we only wanted it to drop to 50 degrees and then regenerate the hot water, we've got that possibility. Uh, we can do it at 10 degrees, 20 degrees. So it's however we want to set it up. This will also have a mail cloud or a, a, um, an internet based app, which you'll be able to access where you can set up programs and times, and if you want to boost your water to bring it on a bit earlier, anything. So it's very versatile in its way in which it can produce its hot water. So as well as setting that up, and how long we want the heat pump to dedicate to regenerate hot water, we also get a standard where we can look at, for example, this is the Mitsubishi Ikidan. We've got a chance to recharge the water either on a standard which means it will read from one of the two thermostats or we set it to large. That means that it will heat up the full capacity of this hot water cylinder using both of the thermostats available. Legionella cycle, yes, we do want a Legionella cycle on. What we'll do, we'll set it to 60 degrees. Anything at 60 degrees will kill the bacteria. We do a frequency of once a week. And that will come on at a time where, you know, your electricity is often cheapest. So at 3 a.m. in the morning. We'll allow a maximum operation. So basically, we, we put a maximum operation. So we're going to say three hours. But what that means is, if your cylinder is on low, lower on temperature, for example, at least it's set in until it can absolutely reach that maximum temperature. doesn't mean that the, the, in, the immersion is going to run for exactly three hours. It's just going to try and achieve that temperature for what we need. Then we put a duration of when, how long we're going to hold that maximum temperature for. And in order to kill the bacteria of Legionella, if any was to form at all, which is very rare, then we, it will only take a couple of minutes. So we'll set it to five just to make sure. Job done. Okay, so we're looking at the time. The hot water cylinder at the moment is 28 degrees. So we've literally just started this heat pump up. Okay, so this is nearly commissioned. But what we're going to do is just show an example of how we're going to gain that hot water to the temperature which we've asked for. And we're going to look, at, if I can keep my arm on time, we're going to see how long it's going to take. Okay, so about half an hour's passed. And we're at 41 degrees already so let's see what the next half hour brings so there we have it ladies and gentlemen so i did get a little sidetracked on a few other bits and pieces to do hence if you look at the time but we're at 55 degrees on the hot water that is a fact so with stratification we've got a sensor about this height yeah and with stratification that's probably going to be about 57 58 degrees so there you go, 55 degrees achieved, no problem. Uh, there was also talk about cylinder placement. There's no cylinder space anymore, they've all gone. Well, maybe, and there are 17 million combi boilers up and down the country. However, we can still make placement if we need to. These cylinders are mains pressured, so they're more versatile. You can put them in a utility room, in a garage, back in the cupboard. You may have room in your loft and headroom, and you may have a loft hatch big enough to enable us to put it up into the loft space. So there's versatility there, and it can still be achieved. Also rattled on about, you know, wasting your time and money when it comes to draft proofing and, you know, keeping your home <laughs> well insulated. I mean, come on, that's really clutching at straws. You know, whatever you've got as a heating element in your home, you need to reduce your heat loss, okay? You wanna make sure you've got a decent thermal envelope in your home. Reducing the amount of energy that's required to heat your home, it is good practice and just common sense in my eyes. And then it's a question about, will it provide enough heat for your property? Yes, it will. Um, you just have to change your habits slightly. 
you know, things don't expect to be able to go up to your radiators and expect to just burn your hands on them. No, you won't achieve that, but you will be achieving temperatures that will set your thermostats up to 21 degrees, so it's very, very comfortable. You have a setback temperature of the night time, and you're saving energy while doing that because then, it, I mean, I don't know about you guys out there, but I don't like my bedroom, for instance, to be really hot and sticky. I want my bedroom to be nice and cool in the evening so I can sleep comfortably. And lastly, it just leads me on to what I think Roger and some people in Parliament are trying to hold on to. And that's the fact of whether or not we're trying to achieve our carbon zero targets by waiting for hydrogen. I'll be honest with you, I want hydrogen as well. We need that technology and the, the, the dependency for fossil fuels to go away completely. However, hydrogen is going to be extremely expensive and extremely complicated when it comes to building the infrastructure and generating hydrogen, enough for everyone. The way in which we need to do that on a zero carbon way is to pr produce green hydrogen. And this is produced by electricity, renewable electricity, solar, wind, sea. But the trouble is, at the moment, the amount of electricity we generate, which is, it goes in terawatt hours, okay? Terawatts per hour, that's a trillion watts. 31,320 trillion watts per hour produced. That's from everything, okay? That's, for, that's from nuclear, oil, gas, um, and renewables, okay? So that's what we're generating now. We need to create four times as much to provide enough green hydrogen for the planet and then produce that once more over in terms of the 31,320 to turn back on the lights of your homes, businesses, street lamps, power your TVs, turn on and charge your laptops, computers, tablets, phones. So you can see where the task is huge. 91% of hydrogen that is produced today at the moment comes from fossil fuels. The oil companies are the ones that are making it. I mean, go figure, we're looking to decarbonize and get away from fossil fuels. So they've got to get their bit when electric cars start taking more and more control. They've got to earn their money somewhere. So it's very, very complicated. And again, it could be 20 years before we do that. Yes, boiler manufacturers are making hydrogen boilers at the moment or hydrogen ready boilers. But realistically, by the time the hydrogen reaches our doorstep, those boilers will be in the bin and new ones will be produced because that is the scale of the job. But you've got to ask yourself this, if heat pump technology is so bad, if it's such a terrible idea, why are the biggest boiler manufacturers designing and producing this product every single day? The likes of Worcester and Valent, because they know it works. So really to conclude, listen, if you're gonna get your information about this product, get the facts. If the heat pump is fitted and you've used an MCS accredited business and it is underperforming or it's completely wrong, you should have signed all the documentation and the contracts. That protects you. That means if that is wrong, it is down to the installation company to rectify it, get it working properly, even if they have to take it out and replace it at their expense. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this more informative than the other information that you've obtained so far. We look forward to seeing you again on the next video. Please like, share, hit that bell notification button and subscribe to our channel. We've got plenty more content to follow as you follow us through this journey for our green industrial revolution. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye.